Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In this video, we're talking about PlayStation Vita, Nintendo Switch, N64, and more. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off here talking about PlayStation Vita emulation on Android with Vita 3K. Vita 3K just got a brand new update, and this one is pretty big. If you head to vita3k.org, click on download, and then click on the latest Android Nightly from GitHub, It'll bring you to the GitHub page where you can pick up the APK. Vita 3K is 100% free. So this is the long-awaited, or really not that long-awaited if you think about it, Vita 3K Android Release 4. It increases the minimum version in order to work to Android 8.0. They do say this is temporary, but at the same time here, if you've got an older version of Android, it's probably worth updating. One, for security reasons, and two, your device might not be able to handle the emulator that well. It adds direct access to PS Vita internal storage with a document provider. They say this should allow alternate frontends to list and launch Vita games. This is actually pretty huge if you use frontends like LaunchBox or DigiShow or Reset Collection or Dig or really anything like that. It adds L2 and R2 triggers to the in-game overlay when PSTV mode is enabled. It rebases with Vita 3K and for those who may not be aware, Vita 3K is also available on PC. If a game doesn't work on Vita 3K on PC, chances are it's not going to work on Android. It fixes Project Eva movies. There are many language fixes. And we talked about this one the other day. Implement memory mapping. This results in a huge performance boost. It also reduces memory usage by a fixed 300 to 400 megabytes, which is quite a bit and it fixes many graphical glitches. Now it is worth pointing out that if you're looking for the best performance possible, similar to other emulators that require a lot of CPU processing power like Aether SX2 or Skyline, Vita 3K does perform the best with a Snapdragon CPU. And interestingly enough here, I've seen a lot of mixed reports about version 4. Some people are saying version 3 actually worked better for them, especially those who had a Mali GPU. If you've tried both versions out, let me know in the comments below. Through my testing, I did like version 4 more, but some people are preferring version 3, which I found very interesting. Fortunately, version 4 and version 3 and version 2 and version 1 are all available on GitHub, so you can pick and choose what version you want to use here. And realistically, it's worth playing around, testing out some settings, and seeing what works for you, and seeing what you're happy with. Moving on, and we're talking about Nintendo Switch emulation on Android with Skyline, and Skyline's got yet another update. Actually, uh, another couple of updates. If you head to skyline emu one here, and click on download. You'll see the latest version at the time of filming is version 2163. On top of that, the paid testing early access version of Skyline, Skyline Edge also got a couple of updates. Version 55 and version 56 have released today and both of these versions have a lot of bug fixes. Specifically with the latest version, version 56, it allows Naruto Storm 4 to go in game, although they do say it's pretty buggy. Here's Bayonetta 1 up and running with a ton of chaos on screen at above 50 frames per second. It appears that Gear Club 2 got a pretty big loading performance boost, going into game after a few seconds as opposed to 3 minutes. And this person actually tested out Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 and said the game worked fine and was playable, but the UI and words were in reverse. Next up, we're talking about N64 emulation on Windows and Linux with Gadolinium. And Gadolinium might be an emulator you may not have heard about before. And interestingly enough, the developer of this emulator, Simone64, dropped by and said, Hello everyone, I figured after the latest video that I want to give a shot at promoting my Nintendo 64 emulator here too. It would also be helpful for the reason of getting more people to test out the library. Doing it alone is insane. My emulator uses parallel RDP for the RDP implementation, so you need a Vulkan compatible GPU. It's also worth mentioning that it's not plug-in based. The CPU and RCP implementations are all written from scratch by me. The emulator does work with games like Super Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie, Ocarina of Time, and some more. Arguably, Gadolinium is still pretty early on in development, but the developer does have a roadmap of what they want to accomplish, including save states, rewind, and cheat support. If you are curious about this one, it's free, it's open source, it's on GitHub, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. The more emulators we've got, the better. And speaking about free open source and something the developer asked me to check out, Last up here, we're talking about something free open source and something a developer asked me to check out. It's called Comics 2 Video. It's not an emulator, but it is very interesting. 
It converts comic book files to videos to be watched on TV video players. The possibility of reading a comic book by watching a video allows the user to be hands-free, no need to hold a phone or press a button screen to change the pages, and also allow reading by people with disabilities or paralysis. I think the concept of this one is pretty cool. It basically turns your comic book into a movie and adjust the time between frames here based on how much text is on screen. Admittedly, I don't really read comic books a whole lot anymore, but if you do, this is available from Mac and Windows, and I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Feel free to check it out. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos, don't tempt fate, save your state.